<laughs> took a little bit of work, but I'm really glad that it was packed so well. Um, yeah, so here it is. I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. So why did I choose this monitor? Uh, there's so many monitors on the market, but this monitor I chose because it's NVIDIA G-Sync capable. So it's going to play well with my 3080 and my new computer build. Uh, it's an IPS screen, so has wide color gamut, uh, DCI-P3 of 98%. Uh, the HDR on it is only 400, which really this is not an HDR monitor uh, by all accounts doesn't have a uh, local area uh, backlight dimming in it. So it's really not an HDR monitor, uh, but that's okay. I don't really want it for that. Uh, it's curved. I think it's a 1900 R curve. So it's a pretty gentle curve, not super aggressive. Uh, I think the Samsung, uh, what's the newest G9 Neo, I think, has a pretty aggressive curve. So this is gonna be good for me doing my video production work that I do, and working on podcasts, and doing streaming and stuff like that. Uh, but I do game on it. I'm going to game on it as well, right? So I do stuff on Twitch with my Extra Life Children's Marathon fundraising for my local children's hospital. Cool thing about this monitor is that it overclocks up to 180 hertz. So coming from my old panels behind this one, I have two Dells. I used to have three. I replaced the far left one with the CRT monitor last year and never replaced the flat panel again. Anyways, uh, the one that I do most of my work on is an IPS panel. The one beside it is a TN. Uh, they're both 60 hertz monitors. This is going to be a night and day difference. I'm super excited to look into that and play with it. It's advertised, uh, it's advertised to have a 0.5 millisecond refresh. Uh, I'm gonna have to test all that out, it has a bunch of different settings on it. Uh, you know how it is, usually the marketing over uh, overreaches with its claims and then <laughs> there's always like ghosting or artifacts, overshoots, stuff like that on a monitor people don't really like. Uh, but I'm gonna be pretty chill with my gaming on it. One feature that I really am going to enjoy is the picture by picture and um, I'm going to explain more on that in a later video. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to set up my um, streaming for my retro consoles on Twitch when I'm doing the children's hospital fundraising work that I do. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. It has a lot of, it goes up really high, which I love. Um, I have my monitors, my old monitors on the desk right now on uh, uh, three mounted monitor arm, which is great. You don't have to worry about that on this. Uh, this base is super minimalistic. Uh, yeah, has a lot of tilt, a lot of tilt. Uh, I don't know why you'd ever need this much tilt, but it has it. Uh, swivel, a weird thing, a lot of monitors uh, in this price point have really, really crummy bases. Some of them don't even tilt. So uh, not a fan of that. And again, I was I was sitting between getting a VA panel or an IPS. And again, the panel that I'm used to working on, uh, the little 23 inch Dell, it's an IPS, has pretty decent color on it. I'm doing video work all the time. So it's like, ah, do I pay like double the price and get an IPS panel? Or do I settle with a, a VA panel and then deal with the, you know, the wa color washout when you are viewing it at an angle and it's just like, nah, gotta, gotta go for what's gonna work for my work. And uh, yeah, for me, I was stuck between this Acer Predator and an Asus model that was pretty similar in specs but I got a little bit of a better deal on this and this one had uh, a better base. So 
like I was just saying, moving your monitor around, uh, depending on what you're using your monitor for. I use mine as a TV too, so like I'll set it up and um, I'll watch movies on it, I'll play video games on it when I'm not doing work, might do some yoga. Uh, so being able to move this around is super useful for me. Um, all the buttons, typical joystick button on the back, all, all your uh, options, presets. I'll get into that as well in a later video. Again, this isn't meant to be a review or anything like that. Uh, I might, my battery's about dead, so I'm probably going to charge this up and then see how much time I have left. If I have some more time though, I'm going to replace the monitors that are on my desk and I'll see about overclocking this. Uh, we'll see if we can get up to 180 hertz. Keep in mind, it's still on the old rig. This bad boy right here, uh, it's gotten me through uh, the pandemic and a, a whole bunch of work, but we're about to upgrade this machine, which I'm really excited about. Uh, some of you in the Discord know that that's been coming for a really long time. I've been talking about it for too long. Anyways, let's jump cut and I'll replace these monitors. All right, that took a little bit longer than I thought it would, but uh, we're finally set up here and the moment of truth. Boot up and set the resolution and see if we can overclock this to 180 hertz. Help if we turned it on. Okay, this is really cool. Booted to the desktop. Obviously, we're gonna have to do something with that. Create a higher resolution, extra wide JK Tech wallpaper, but we'll get to that at some point in the future. Let's uh, check out our NVIDIA settings. So there we are at uh, 3440 by 1440 native resolution. Uh, by default, it's at 144 hertz. And let's bump it up to 180. This is really wicked. This is really cool. So like I said, this is not a review of the monitor. Uh, it's just a quick overview. I went to blurbusters.com just because uh, after overclocking to 180 Hertz, I had to see it for myself. Uh, this is really cool. I've never actually seen this before. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned. And in upcoming videos, I'll dive further into all the features, the OSD and all that fun stuff. And uh, give you a little bit more feedback as to what I really think of this monitor. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.